Hey, welcome to the Daily Devo. We were talking about covenant and how covenant is a relationshiply based contract with God. And God wants to have covenant with us. And we were looking at Genesis chapter 17. By the way, welcome to the Daily Devo. Pastor Mac, going to break it down, this idea of covenant, and we're going to look at how it applies to us today. This is a covenant contract that God had with Abraham. And we find that there's some implications to that relationship that God was establishing with Abraham and how it applies to us. When we go into the New Testament, we find out that Abraham is a father, is called a father of faith because he walked in faith. He believed God at his word and he modeled what that looked like. And we saw the blessings of God. We find that Abraham was justified before God because he believed God at his word. And so likewise, we're justified by faith Believing God at his word. But where does this covenant for us lead to? What's the covenant? Well, I want to take you down a couple of uh, roads here as we look at this and kind of unpack this. But I'm going to take you to some of the Old Testament prophesying and pointing us to the covenant that we walk in. And then we're going to look at Hebrews and we're going to talk about the covenant that Jesus is established with you and I. So, uh, Jeremiah... 3131 is a great jumping point um, in this. My Bible actually words this says the new covenant. And so this is a prophetic piece to the nation of Israel to look for the Messiah and what the Messiah was going to public to accomplish in the covenant. So what we're coming to understand is some of the work that God wants to do with those in the new covenant. That would be you and I. So verse 31, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their father on the day when I took them out of the land to bring them in the land, but my covenant they broke. Though I was their husband, declares the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people and no longer shall they teach one another or his neighbor or his brother saying, know the Lord for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest declares the Lord and for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sins no more. So in this picture of the new covenant, one of the beautiful pieces that's being presented to us is that God says, hey, the law was given, the covenant of the law was given, an outside force to bring inward change, but it hasn't happened. I'm going to make a new covenant. And this new covenant, when it's going to be fulfilled, what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to take your heart of stone out and give you a heart. I'm going to put my law within you. I'm going to put the Ten Commandments inside of you. So instead of trying to have an outward force being presented to you for inward change, I'm going to bring an inward force to bring that change. And that change or that force is that I'm going to put my my law in your heart. You're going to see the beauty of my commandments and you're going to it's going to be part of the fabric of who you are. So this is a picture of this new covenant that that is being pointed to. Then again, we can look at Ezekiel 36. In Ezekiel 36 um and chapters 36 and 37 Chapter 36, he says, I'm going to put my spirit within you. But I want to actually jump to chapter 37 of Ezekiel. And I want to look at verse 14. So he says, and I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. and You shall know that I am the Lord for I have spoken and I will declare it, says the Lord. So in chapter 36, you have uh, the dead man bones of the exceedingly dry valley. And God says, I'm going to take you, nation of Israel. I'm going to put my spirit in you. I'm going to bring you back into the nation. I'm going to give life where there is no life. And I'm going to do that through my spirit. So the concept that they were looking for is that God was going to work in the heart of men. Now you can understand when Jesus came that he wasn't concerned with a military messianic victory. He wasn't concerned about overthrowing the Roman government. What he was concerned with was the heart condition of the nation of Israel. And he knew that if I put a new heart in the nation of Israel, then there will be material blessings that are going to come forward from that. Then all of these other areas are affected. But first, God wants to deal with the heart because that's where the relationship is. Now, let's jump to um, Hebrews, as I was pointing out, and let's look at how the writer of Hebrews 
points to us this new covenant um, and where it, how it's fulfilled and what to be looked at. So in Hebrews chapter 8, and actually I'm going to jump back a little bit to chapter 7, and I'm just going to take a couple of verses. In verse 22, it says, This makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. And what he's pointing out is how Jesus is so much better than the Mosaic covenant and how he fulfilled the law and how we're given a better promise now so that we're not justified by our works, but we're justified by Jesus. And he's saying we have a better covenant, a new covenant. So it's pointing back to that Ezekiel 36 and Ezekiel 37 and that Jeremiah 31, 31 verse. Now, chapter 8, as he's uh, breaking this down, verse, and the whole chapter is talking about this. So I would encourage you, just read the whole chapter. But I'm just jumping on a couple of verses here. Verse 13 of chapter 8. In speaking of a new covenant, he makes the first one obsolete. And what has become obsolete is growing old, is ready to vanish away. The old covenant was attempting for that outward or that inward change from outward source, the law of God, and being a works performance, trying to walk in that, right, coming up short. He's saying that is been replaced with a new covenant. The new one is that God's Holy Spirit dwells in the heart of people when they enter into a relationship with God through the blood of Jesus Christ, a better covenant. This is our invitation. This is what God is calling us to. You see, now the Spirit of God is working in the heart of a believer to walk the beauty of the law of God. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. The law of love, the Spirit, is empowering us by changing our hearts. What are we talking about? We go all the way back to Abraham, and we find that circumcision is a picture of the work of God in the heart of man. Circumcise the foreskin of your heart. God is in the heart business. He's in the soul business. The Spirit of God wants to bring beauty in our lives, and he does it through our heart. I would submit to you as Romans um, 12 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is my heart? affixed on? What are my affections? What has my attention? God is inviting me into this covenant relationship where God now dwells within this man's heart, dwells within your heart. So we're walking in the newness of life and walking in the newness of covenant by the power of the Holy Spirit who's changing us from the inside to the out. God bless you.